when you see the realities, when you start to see, okay, wait, the emperor actually has no clothes. It's not necessarily something that most people can go, okay, cool, boom, pulling them out of school and here, like, I get that that's the thing. So we gotta start small with a bigger plan too. We gotta go ahead and play a little bit of checkers, but really start thinking chess. We gotta think multiple moves ahead, but what can we do right now? The most simple thing parents can do is do a quick self-check. I am the primary educator. So what is that education looking like for my kids? Am I saying, honey, you can be anything that you want to be? You can do anything that you want to do? And then over here on the side, I'm like, my life sucks. I hate my job. I hate going to work every day. It's called hypocrisy. They're going to see that. They're going to feel that. That's what you're educating them on. You're educating them that you don't actually believe. So I've got to start to take a look at me first. Am I saying, hey, health matters. Health is important. You want to be physically healthy. Uh, you don't need to exercise. Here's your next Krispy Kreme. That's called hypocrisy. So the first thing the parents can do that, again, is the most simple thing is go, what am I saying versus what am I doing? Am I moving the needle forward for myself, for my family? Am I leading in a way that is congruent with what I say I want? Because again, the things you say are usually what you wish you believed. The things that you do are the things that you actually believe. So am I doing that first? That's the first step, is taking a look at that. Second step is taking a look at the overall environment. So let's say taking them out of school is not even an option right now. Okay, got it. Is there a different school that could potentially be a better environment? Is that something you can make work? Is it easier to figure out a way to make more money and pay for a better environment than take them all the way home and somebody's got to stop. I mean, that's a conversation for each person to have. But what does the environment look like, including when they go there? Who are they around? What does that environment look like? And then when they come home, again, what is the environment? What is the environment for me? What is the environment with my relationship with my spouse? What is the environment when we talk about the things that are going to matter, when we talk about our spiritual life and moving things forward? What does that conversation look like? How do we act that out? When we're talking about finances, are we giving them the environment where they believe money doesn't grow on trees and you're just always going to be broken? We weren't born into money. Are we giving them the environment of, hey, we didn't learn this game yet, but we can still learn that game and we're still going to get better. And here's the example of how you can come along with us. What does that conversation look like? What does the environment look like in terms of the people that you invite into their life? What does that environment look like? Do we, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, he's always drunk. Yeah, he's always cussing. Yeah, he's always beating his wife. But it's my brother, and that's just how he is. So we're going to bring him over to the kids. Or are we going, hey, we're going to go ahead and set up boundaries in our relationships. And we're going to only have as much as we can control that. Are we only going to have people who are around, who are lifting our kids up, and who are providing a solid environment? They're the water. They're the sun. They're the soil that my kid's going to get a positive influence in. What are we doing on the... TV side, on the music side, all of those things have to do with the environment. So how can you protect that environment as much as possible? And what distractions can you take away? If they're going and living in this faux environment of school all day, are they now coming home and jumping right back into a faux environment of playing video games only to move on to another faux environment of scrolling only to move on to another faux environment of porn and we're going to go ahead and let them perpetuate that cycle and then all of a sudden jump into the real world and be quote unquote successful and happy and know how to operate absolutely not so what are the distractions we need to take away as well we can start taking a look at every single one of those variables now checkers as we start to plan the long term of and how do we get them out of that environment that they're in 30 hours a week, chess?